Hi, welcome to my Overwatch Workshop Tutorials. Keep in mind as we go through these tutorials that I'm not a professional programmer. Everything that I've learned here is sort of from just playing around in the workshop, and there may be more efficient ways of handling these things, but hopefully I can teach you something useful. To begin, I'd like to just run through some of the basics of the workshop. To access the workshop, create a custom game of any kind. Go here. Create and then go to the settings and workshop. This is where you can create your script. Let's look at rules. To start, I'll create a new rule with the add rule button. From here, we can see the name of the new rule, events that trigger the rule, the conditions that must be met for the rule to trigger, and the actions that will run when the rule is triggered. To stay organized, I'll go ahead and give this rule a name. I'll just name it example. There are several different events that can trigger a rule. This will affect when the game will check the conditions and run the actions. For example, the ongoing global event will continuously check for when the conditions are met on a global level as long as the game is active. Contrast, uh, the ongoing each player will continuously check for whether each player has met the conditions of the rule, allowing you to affect specific players. This might be a little confusing, but it'll probably make more sense as we start playing around with conditions and actions. The rest of the actions check for specific events regarding players. The player earned elimination, for example, will check conditions when the player earns a kill. So for our example, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, ongoing each player. You can also specify which team this player is on or which slot they occupy on the server and also what hero they might be playing. Uh, for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and select Mercy on any team. So our conditions here are what determine whether a rule is carried out or not. Only when every single condition is met will a rule actually run. If we create a condition is button held, event player interact true, and is button held event player crouch true the rule will only happen if mercy is holding both of these buttons at the same time and that brings us to our actions for this rule I'm gonna have mercy get sort of shot up into the air as she's holding these buttons sort of like Farah's uh, jet fuel whenever she's holding spacebar so we'll go ahead and create this new action. We'll go ahead and set the action to apply impulse. And you see here the player that it affects is the event player. This is why we selected the each player event. In a global event you are checking the conditions from a player's perspective so you can't easily reference them like this. So for our direction here we're just, we're just gonna select up. It's nice and simple for right now. And then for our speed, we'll select, or we'll type in 20. And it'll be relative to the world. Uh, and we can either incorporate our current motion, so we can sort of add the directional speed of Mercy that she already has, plus straight up, or we could just cancel all of her motion that she has and just make her go straight up. So I want this rule to loop if Mercy continues to hold down the required buttons. The way I can do that is I can add a loop condition, or a loop action. However, the game will not let me do this. This is because you need to add some sort of delay between each loop, otherwise it would loop way too quickly and crash your custom game. Keep in mind it can still crash if you have too many loops going on at once. So to add a delay we're just going to go here, we're going to create a wait action. And I'll just keep it on uh, 0.25 seconds and instead of ignoring the condition uh, we're gonna have it abort when false 
ignore condition um, will carry out the timer no matter what it will ignore whether the condition went false or not but abort when false will stop the count it will stop the entire rule if the if the conditions go false so if she lets go of either of these buttons it will stop the countdown the 20.25 second countdown so uh, you can see here that the wait condition or the wait action was created below the loop that means it'll happen after the loop and obviously that doesn't really work out because then we still don't it'll loop back to before there was a wait so we'll just simply select that and then come up here to move it up one we can just deselect it and here if we select these rules or these actions rather sorry if we select these actions we can actually um, do several things with them here we can delete them which is pretty self-explanatory and then we can also copy them and then paste them so now we have those again and that can be useful if you're doing something where you need a lot of the same actions or rules in your script so I'll just select these copies we don't need them so I'm just gonna delete those so this should be ready to go so let's go ahead and test this out I'll go ahead and uh, start the game now entering King's Row. and I'll select a hero that's not mercy uh, we'll go ahead and just select Brigida I will be your shield. and I'll press control and hold interact which by default is usually F on PC uh, I'll hold both of those and nothing is happening and that's good that's what we want I'll go ahead and swap to mercy I'll be watching over. and I'll just go outside here I'll hold control and F and look at that I'm being shot up into the air and if I hold it down uh, that just keeps happening and then as soon as I let go it cancels that and it won't loop anymore and it won't keep applying that impulse upwards so now that you know how to put these rules together you can sort of experiment with the insane amount of options that Blizzard gave us to work with in the workshop just bear in mind that this game was made with the intention of never having more than 12 players at a time fighting over an objective and that's how it was optimized Having too many rules, variables, and other things reevaluating all at once will crash your game and send you back to the lobby, which is extremely heartbreaking when after you've worked on a game mode for a long time and that just keeps happening. So try and keep those things to a minimum. Uh, don't worry, I'll give you a bunch of tips and tricks to avoid overloading your custom game server that we'll, we'll cover those throughout the uh, tutorials. And lastly, I want to show you how to uh, save and share your game mode. So if we go back to the lobby here, go to your settings. You can see at the top right here, you got four options. The first one will let you save your preset. Now this saves your lobby settings, your map pool, your hero roster, and your workshop rules. All of this, it saves all of this under one game mode. Unfortunately, you are limited to how many of these you can have on your account. You can see I have these here. I'm pretty sure this is the maximum amount here. I don't know why this is a limitation, but it is. So if we go ahead and click save, it looks like I can save one more here. Um, you can create a new one. Just name it. I, I, I'm not going to actually save it right now. Um, but I could just call it test or whatever, but then I could also um, select a previous one and Overwrite that save with this new stuff, which I'm not going to do that for right now uh, This next button here is to import a code from another game mode That either you made previously or you got from online or from somebody else and that's usually a, a five character code and then the next button here is to share your code and that will create a new code for you to share now 
be warned, this code does expire after six months after it was created. I, the only way to make sure that your game mode is actually safe is to save it on your account. But again, you can only have so many saved, so we have some pretty harsh limitations here that we have to work around if we want to save our favorite game modes. Uh, again, I'm not really sure why these limitations are here. I understand that every time you create a code, it sort of saves that in Blizzard's servers. And obviously, if you got a ton of players saving codes, that's going to take up a lot of space and they want to sort of flush that out. But I, I don't understand why we're not allowed to save some on our own computer or something like that. And this last option here is just to report code. I haven't, uh, I haven't actually had any reason to ever need this. Um, however, with the relatively recent release of custom text, I can kind of see where maybe that could come into play. So that about covers the basics of the workshop. If you'd like to learn more, check out my workshop tutorials playlist here on my channel. Additionally, you can join my workshop discord to ask questions, interact with other workshop creators and players, and stay up to date on my own workshop creations. Thanks for watching.